Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new all-in-one flight controller which is budget friendly as well as doing our first flight controller stress testing on the channel. We're actually going to apply simulated noise, some hardcore noise and see if the voltage regulators break, the OSD starts flickering or anything weird that happens. But before we begin, let's go ahead and take a look at the board and talk about some of its specifications. Now this board is from HackRC and HackRC, I guess, are well known to bring us some nice little budget cheap stuff. So far everything I've used from them has been working absolutely good. So let's go ahead and talk about this flight controller. So this is an F4 flight controller and it's an all-in-one flight controller, which means the PDB is integrated to this. And this is also stackable, I guess, because it does have... Um, an ESC pin out here, female pin, so I guess you, this has its own ESC, and um, I guess it would just stack on top. So I'm going to be looking for that and seeing if I can get it in, and go ahead and test the whole setup here. So let's go ahead and talk about the board here. So it's rated for 150 amps maximum uh, continuous current throughout the 3 ounce copper of the board, so that's pretty good. It has a 5 volt 2 amp regulator, which we're going to be stress testing right now. It does have beta flight OSD. Um, it supports PPM, S bus, I bus, and Spectrum. And S bus is on RX1, I bus is on RX6, so that's good to know. And that's really it. And it takes an SD card, so yeah. So let's go ahead and now take a look at the board here. So as you can see, we have the arrow right there, which means the board would be placed in your quadcopter like this, and this would be the front here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the layouts. We have motor one, two, three, four. So that's perfect beta flight orientation. So that's a big plus. Our USB is on the left. Beautiful. We got a little boot button. That's good. This The soldering pad size is actually very good. You're going to be able to solder beautifully, and you're going to have nice, good connections to your ESC tube, you know, to provide power for the ESC. So that's a huge plus. So let's start from the bottom here. So we have B minus, which is the buzzer's ground. We have 5 volt, we have ground, and we have LED. This is the LED signal pin. So this would control your LEDs. However, nowadays you can reroute this to whatever you want to even control your camera, which is pretty cool. All right, and as you can see here, we have our signals, and then we have our ground and positive uh, pads for the ESC here. And this is your battery pads right there. So, and it does have a current sensor, as you can see right there, so that's a huge plus. And they also do provide you with connectors on the other side if you wanted to use connectors, which is also pretty good. They do provide them with everything, and they also give you an XT60 connector. Now, as you can see here, it does have SD card expansion, so that's awesome. So that's a huge plus, and there's our beta flight OSD right there. Perfect. So let's go back to this side now. So as you can see here, let's actually flip the board and take a look together. We have R6, which is UART6, receive. And then we have the TX, which is the transmit uh, UART6 right there. We have R1, T1, uh, which is UART1. This is receive. And this is the transmit T3, okay, R3. Now here it kind of gets a little bit tricky. It says SSI and SP. I think what they meant is this is where the PPM or IBUS would possibly go on. But in, on, in the specs, they're saying it's on R6. So this is where IBUS spectrum and all that kind of stuff would go. And I believe um, SBUS would be here, or it could be here. So it doesn't really clarify, it doesn't really state it, so it's probably going to be one of these two here. And um, yeah, you would just enable UART1 serial for the SBUS. And we have a 3.3 volt pad right there. This would be for your spectrum uh, or any kind of receiver that needs 3.3 volts. Here's a 5 volt, and then we have two grounds. So that's pretty basic and simple. So <clears throat> now actually moving on to the uh, VTX and camera. You know, there's a little, little, little thing that really bugged me because I'm, as you can see, I've already soldered some wires here because I was testing and we're going to be testing in a little bit and checking the noise and seeing how well it handles. However, if you take a look here, let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, as you can see here, we have ground, five volt camera, perfect. So that is the yellow wire for the camera. This is 5 volt and ground to power up the camera. Here is VTX. This would be the yellow wire going to your VTX. And as you can see here, it says 5 volt and ground. I wish they routed 
just a normal you know VCC to here so this 5 volt you know for my, for the VTX I've used it needs 7 to 24 volts so this won't work but if you have some kind of those new unifier TBS or whatever they take 5 volts so you can go ahead and just give it 5 volt from here and here's just the ground and well I think that's gonna include it for this side here it looks it, it has a nice layout um, it looks absolutely clean I don't see anything you know it looks like it's good quality it's not one of those bad quality boards so enough talking and let's get started all right guys so now what we're going to do is we are doing our first official flight controller stress testing video and we're going to start with this so what we're going to do is we're going to be actually monitoring the 5 volt regulator and the input noise going to the flight controller and we're going to see how or when is the OSD going to break? However, we're only going to be testing very nasty voltage drops. I still have not finished the setup for the voltage spikes. We will be doing that later on, but this is kind of like a quick demo of what is to be also expected on the channel in the upcoming days of all one flight controller testing, regulators, as well as the proper ways to actually filter all the noise in your components. So what we're going to do first actually is we were going to hit it with just a nasty square wave around one kilohertz so let's talk a little bit about noise now in escs what i've noticed i've been measuring a lot of taking a lot of measurements lately to get this down just right uh what i found the escs noise are they tend to be from one kilohertz up to 100 kilohertz but rarely reach 100 kilohertz usually it's like 70 maximum so what i'm doing is i am actually testing within this range so we don't exceed it and usually it's the lower frequencies that's really affecting this stuff but you know, even the higher frequency effects. So let's just take a look here. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the oscilloscope view here so we can take a look. All right, so now the oscilloscope's running and we have this purple line here is the five volt regulator that's powering the OSD as well as the flight controller itself. This is the input noise that's going straight to the flight controller coming from the ESCs or whatever it's going to be. However, obviously here it's gonna be simulated. Now this is a perfect voltage um, signal going in as you can see it's a super flat line now watch this now we're gonna go ahead and apply some very very nasty noise here and we're gonna start with the worst type of noise that you could possibly get and I've gotten this noise from uh, F60 motor V2s not the new ones not the V3s and the Typhoon the Airbot Typhoon 35 amp 4 and one ESC at specific throttle levels now this was also breaking my OSD on Omnibus. So let's go ahead and, and apply the noise. So give it a moment to pick up. This is that very, very, this is the noise that you really do not want to see. This is very terrible. However, as you could tell here, the OSD doesn't even flicker once. So this is very good. And don't forget, I'm only testing voltage drop noise, not voltage spike noise. As you can see, it's very nasty here, and you really can't make out until I start zooming out here. As you can see that but however we're gonna need to zoom in because we will go ahead and we're gonna change this type of noise where we're gonna sweep through the frequencies this is just a one kilohertz uh, noise right here is what you're seeing and you can see the noise both on the 5 volt regulator and the uh, input voltage and the OSD is absolutely beautiful so so far it's good I'm, I'm actually very impressed so let's go ahead and jump to a different type of noise where we go through, I believe, 10 kilohertz to 70 kilohertz. So let's go ahead and set that up. All right, give it a moment. So this is from one kilohertz all the way to 70 kilohertz. Very nasty noise. And um, here's where you would start seeing the OSD flicker on some e some flight controllers. However, this one's holding its OSD absolutely beautiful. And if you take a look here. Uh, the, the bottom right there the purple that is the 5 volt regulator and it's doing absolutely beautiful So the filtration that's going straight to the OSD is getting filtered out and as you can see here We're testing the voltage drop noise. We don't have any spikes going up However, that'll be upcoming next once I perfect it, but right now this is what we're going to be testing for and it's looking beautiful so you know this flight controller is absolutely looking great so far um, I will make a second video for this and later on uh, another flight controller will do the voltage spikes and the voltage drops all together in one. But this is just like a quick video to show you and to do a little test and see how good it co copes. And it's actually coping very, very well. I'm very impressed. 
And, um, and again, this is the first test. This is the first stress testing test that I've officially done on the channel. More to come and we'll gather more data and understand this stuff a bit more. So um, as you can see here, it's, it's very, very terrible noise. So let's go ahead and just go back to that very, very nasty noise. So this is going through from one kilohertz to 70 kilohertz noise. So this is around what I find most ESCs noise generates around. So it's, it's, it's some pretty nasty stuff as you can see here. All right, so let's go ahead and switch back to here. And we're gonna go with this, there we go. This is, you know, this type of noise, this one again, is the worst type of noise. This is a super low frequency, which is you're getting huge voltage drops and coming back up. But however, when it goes down, it's staying down for a bit longer. That's what it means by lower frequency. So when it drops, it stays down long, then it goes back up. And that's what's going on here. It's, it wants to about to turn off, but it just cannot because it just gets another rush of a little bit of uh, voltage spikes to just, you know, to basically turns back on the, the regulator. And then it just, it's just, it's just very nasty stuff. And um, yeah, there is no voltage regulator for the VTX and I'm using just the regular ESGN TX526 for the testing and the camera's powered off the five volt here. And as you can see, you know, OSD is holding up very well. The next one, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look for the DYS F4 and um, seeing when it breaks, because, you know, this is holding up very well. I mean, I, I couldn't get it to break, to be honest, on voltage drop noise. So we're going to do the voltage spike later on, as I mentioned again. And um, yeah, and well, that's it, guys. So that's really going to it for this video. So far, this looks like an absolute beauty board, but I mean, it's still too early. This is just bench testing, um, and I see it functioning very beautiful. I mean, look how disgusting this electricity is that's going into this flight controller, and it's still running without a blink. It's just running. It's not restarting. It's not doing anything dumb. So overall, I think the execution of this board seems to be pretty good. And um, I'm pretty impressed so far. So these are this board and then Maytek F405 are the only two boards I could not get the OSD to break so far. And um, I'm very impressed and uh, seems like a good one. If anyone's used it, please let us know down in the comment section. And that's going to include it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions or any ideas, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.